have an affidavit, Mr. Ndegwa, if you can't understand what we are talking about, verbatim, read verbatim from your affidavit. Yeah, yeah. You know, may I draw your attention to paragraph 74 of the judgment of the ruling in Navini. The judge says that due to the failure to so disclose on the part of the third respondent, it has led to an erosion of the confidence and the applicants have that will be neutral when it comes to the hearing and the determination of the arbitration. That, Your Lordship, is a confidence that has been eroded. On the question, Your Lordship, on the duty to sit, the duty to sit must be accompanied by transparency and accountability to the parties appearing before a judge. Your Lordship, the duty to sit and the oath of office taken by a judge or a judicial officer must be executed in a manner that breeds confidence to the parties that appears before a judicial officer. Your Lordship, it's our humble submissions that that, evidence, that confidence has been eroded. Your Lordship, The arguments by Mr. Nyamondi that the parties are forum shopping. Your Lordship, this bench was constituted pursuant to Article 165, Clause 4 of the Constitution. And none, no petitioner herein has the capacity to direct the Chief Justice who constitutes the bench as to which judge to sit in a particular bench. There is no possibility, Your Lordship, therefore, for an argument that parties are forum shopping. At the inception of the proceedings, Your Lordship, we appeared before you and made arguments comfortably. Little did we know that we would be faced with an application of this nature due to the failure of the Honorable Judges to disclose those material facts. I invite Kibe to proceed. My Lord, uh, while uh, during the course of, uh, I guess we've been here for about five, six hours when uh, this application has been going on, and uh, there are two things that have been crisscrossing my mind. My Lord, the first issue is uh, the issues of substance and the issue of uh, perception, the optics. What we would be the optics, my lord? The optics, my lord, as we sit here in public view, in the glare of Kenyans, some of whom, if you use the reasonable test, are professionals, people who have studied above from four, probably half the populations. The other half of the population are people who are definitely below from four. So what's the reasonable person's test here? And what are they seeing? The first thing my lord and my ladies are there seeing is that the petitioners appear to be categorical for good or bad reasons that they do not have confidence in the bench. And examinations of the fact may still prove that they may or may not be wrong. But the issue is the test as far as when you read all these cases in matters particularly that are that have some political angles, perceptions is everything. And perception is a big issue. So that, my Lord, the issue therefore would be, shall we proceed on the basis where from the word go, the petitioners clearly have appeared to the rest of the country, they have got no confidence. With the same zeal and spirit, the respondents who are being accused for good or bad reasons are saying we have full confidence in them. That should trouble us. Because at the end of the day, it is the coloration of whatever decision is made. It will be done from the prisms, oh, we told you. 
we knew this, they were going to do this or the other one. In huge cases like this, it should never be that way. I go to the second issue, the issue of the Honorable Attorney General. I listened to the Honorable Attorney General. The Honorable Attorney General has made uh, an application, one of the applications to set aside the orders. I went back to Article 156. 156 on one hand suggests the Attorney General is the President's lawyer. There is another clause, I don't know whether it's 11 or something like that. It suggests that the Attorney General is the guardian of public interest. And you ask yourself, the Attorney General, without doubt, when it becomes to the President, he's 100% psychophantic, a President's lawyer. But, but when, not, objection, when it he's comes... He's a new issue, that which issue is never issue. part of the recusal application. That is not a new issue, my Lord. Let me proceed. My Lord, the Attorney General is the guardian of public interest. What is the public interest in a process of impeachment as we stand here today. My Lord, that public interest must be the country has been treated with an imperfect, I'll not go to the details, with an imperfect impeachment process at the National Assembly and at the Senate. When it reached towards the tail end of this process, the public will be treated to the fact that in the processes that presupposed that uh, you would take about 75 to 100 days were conducted within hours. So that the bigger questions, my Lord, would be that there is a complaint that is being made, a serious one, of the right to fair hearing and human dignity. Rights that are not derogatable under the Kenyan constitution even during an emergency. My Lord, if you are faced by an attorney general who pursuant to one mandate, uh, is the, their conscience has not been touched that there is some public interest in looking at these things a little bit from the perspective of the deputy president and those who feel like the deputy president that a fair and square deal has not been granted by the processes that have taken place. Your lordships, that should concern us. I go to the next issue, the main issue that he cannot deny, he did say. My Lord, you are being told that uh, we are in serious danger, we are in the throes of uh, chaos or something like that, and uh, there is some danger. My Lord, uh, the truth of the matter is, the time that has been prescribed, thank God, by part the constitution itself, they are far from over. And the petitioners here keep saying, and Honorable Muite has told me, tell the court that if the court can be able to hear us from next Thursday when all of us have done responses and whatever amendment, we are ready to conclude that issue. We are ready, we know the timelines. So that my lady, the connection, therefore, of somebody saying that, oh, the only public interest here, and this is the Attorney General, is that we must swear by hook or crook before the petition has been heard. That also should be a matter of grave concern. Sure, because that, the there was never a submission like that, and I think counsel must have some respect for the truth. Nobody said anybody must be sworn by hook or crook. Please let's respect the, the truth. My Lord, I think the language always in submissions belongs to counsel, but what Professor Gedu Moyai, my former teacher, said is this, that there is, we are in the throes of instability, something to that effect, because if we do not complete the process that was started by the National Assembly, a huge power vacuum might arise. And that it is why, when I use hook or crook, it is why the only obsession that we hear or oh, conservatory order taking out. That is the context. My Lord, I go to the next issue. Who is this who made the, the author of office of uh, uh, Professor Ogenda? My Lord, there was the question of CTS. The question of CTS, I believe, had dealt with it. 
and all those kind of issues and we pointed out that the issues of CTS, whereas we had talked about them, they appeared for the first time not from the respondent's affidavit but from the ruling that the court made. I don't need to say anything about it. The respondents had said nothing about them. My Lord, to Professor o Ojenda, there is a question of... Uh, no, you have to respond. There, there is a question of uh, the internal memo. The question of uh, the internal memo, again, that was not a matter that was ever placed here in any affidavit, as far as I'm concerned. That was yesterday's submissions. I think you are here. I think these are notes for today. Those are notes for yesterday. No, these are notes for today, my lord. That was yesterday. <laughs> no, 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 my lord. If they, they, they have a date and I had a different notebook. But uh, they would get uncomfortable, let me pass that. Uh, in fact, he's not the main guy I have to deal with. <laughs>
that is direct issue that was before the court, that was not an issue for that ruling. And therefore, dealing with matters that uh, are outside there and you are be told, the ruling has dealt with those matters which it ought not to have dealt with, so it has become res judicata. It cannot become res judicata in our submission. Maloja, with regard to, to the issue of uh, the friendships, I think this is something that uh, they have been preoccupied with. Malod, nobody is trying to criminalize friendships, not at all. But my Lord, there are always degrees of friendships. When it is alleged, for example, that a friendship between Kibe and Ndegwa is of such a close proximity, that Kibe and Begwa ought to disclose that fact to any other person, it would be different, for example, to my friendships with Harvey, somebody we just meet and do a few cases with. So that, my Lord, the issue at the end of the day is one of degree. To what extent are there interactions between these two individuals? Because, my Lord, and we were saying that uh, you may feel that uh, there are issues. Issues could well be raised. That who was so that, for example, was Judge Mrima from the Kenya Law Reports uh, records as people would be sending materials to indicate that the, the, the lawyer for Mweshimiwa Kingi during the case with Esposito? Again, the answer would be yes. So this is not a casual friendship. It is a friendship that is over. There have been had client lawyer relationship, other personal relationships are all there. So that, my Lord, you cannot be able. Mr. Kibbe. Yes, my Lord. I had intended to restrain myself. Yes, my Lord. From interjecting in these applications, but I think uh, the statement you're making is factually incorrect. In the Esposito matter, I appeared as an advocate for IEBC, yes. not Mr. King. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks for the clarification. My Lord, the, the issue... I think if we people can respond on issues of law, it would really help us, rather than going back on issues of facts. Yes, so, 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 so that, my Lord, there was, there was a question of forum shopping. Forum shopping, I go with what Ms. Andegua has said. If this bench recuses itself, it does not mean that we shall choose any of the judges that may replace this bench. My, my, my Lord, on the issue of uh, Mr. Moshemi's uh, submissions. My Lord, uh, Mr. Moshemi's submissions, we start first of all from the premise that Mr. Moshemi did not have a replying affidavit. We did not have a replying affidavit. I tried to object in order you said I respond. We want just to draw the court's attention that if you want to take factual deposition you take somebody else's affidavit that has been deposed to on oath and say, this is not true, you did not sign here, you did not do this, you have not subjected it to any examination or anything, that would be completely to go outside the rules of evidence as we understand them. And therefore, for, uh, for as, as much as the issues of uh, Mr. Mushemi is concerned, I urge this court to disregard them. There are two other more important issues that uh, we need to point out. My Lord, the, using the test of uh, the reasonable man and woman in Kenya, it is a question of splitting hair. President Ruto and Tuya. Is splitting of hair for the simple reason eh? that during even the Senate proceedings themselves, we were treated to a situation in which, and one of the principals was indicted, in which political positions at cabinet, board levels, and others were toss-ups for purposes of political dealings. The average knowledge, because that is the standard that you've said, a reasonably informed Kenyans is aware that any new government comes to office 
with its own appointees to those board positions, but do you object permanent to that secretaries, kind of and Mr. Kibe, you, object you are going beyond what is really necessary for this. I think you have made your submissions. Respect the court and your colleagues. Reply on issues of law, please. I thought that was an issue of law. My Lord, my Lord, the my Lord, I finish with uh, the question that was raised by the one without an affidavit with, by, by Michael Moshemi. The issue of Mr. Michael Moshemi, where you are told that for purposes of gauging bias, you should be able to look at the MP for Madeira, who did not, uh, who voted against the deputy president, although he was his father or something in the wedding. My Lord, the direct reference to that would also have to be taken from the bar, the way it was also made from the bar, and the direct reference to that is that the wife of this MP... My Lord, that's a question of fact. Yes, it was also the same Lord. question of fact. Let that, me reply uh, to was point of law, my Lord. No. We well, tried... Lord, we should understand what we mean by matters of fact. Questions of when, who, where, what happened, who did this, who did that. Those are all matters of fact. My Lord, the only exception, and we say it, when we tried to stop, to, to, to stand to say that Moshemi is dealing with those issues, you told me, my lord, you will respond. So I ask that I respond to that issue. That's the last issue. And the response is this, that the wife of that Madeira MP is also on record as having said that I voted against the DP Gashagua because he insulted us and said our wedding will not last. It had nothing to do with the impeachment charges. <laughs> so that we, we cannot ignore that is what he said. And it is on public record. So that, my Lord, the long and short of it. <laughs> so that, my Lord, <laughs> the long and short of it. Uh, Mr. Kipe. Yes. How do I record that? <laughs> no, my Lord, the way you recorded, I think I saw a record. From the other side, what you are saying? Yes, I record it. Well, I, I don't know who recorded, but he was allowed to say in open court that even his own MP voted against him. So to to, de to be able to demonstrate whatever point he was making, and I'm also saying that from the bar, let it also be made clear that the wife to the uh, she was she's also an honourable MP said I voted because the DP said that that marriage was not going to last, not on impeachment. So that, my Lord, the long and short of it, because we've had a long evening, is that I beseech I, I, this... I, I suppose that the marriage still subsists, right? It still subsists. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and we also hope, my Lord, that when we are, that, that, that when we are hard with this petition, the tenure of the DP could proceed. <laughs> so that, my Lord, the last point that uh, we need to make, is that uh, there is somebody, I guess, who is a doctor, and, uh, and something that Dr. Camino has said, a moment of introspection. This moment of introspection is important. Because for you, my Lord, the issue at the end of the day would remain that an important case is up for determination. Besides the information that is here, if your councils were to show what is it that other things that are coming up in the course of the proceedings, that questions of perception is such a huge issue, my Lord, that if you are to apply the old rule that you are being told to apply, that you have a duty to sit, anybody who does not come with a smoking gun, disregard it and sit nevertheless. My Lord, that would defeat the meaning of let justice be done and be seen to be done. But more importantly, it would also affect my reading of chapter 6. The one that would be said that if there is somebody 
questioning, like the DP, he has written a complaint, it may be right, it may not be right. It may be upheld, it might not be upheld. But my lord, the question is, as we await for that day, should any appeal or anything that results from this case relates to the issue that related to the conduct of the judges or we deal with the issue of the moment. My Lord, with those submissions, I urge you respectfully, weighty as an enormity of having to argue this application, hold as we have tried to convince you. There are more than reasonable grounds that in existence, that there would be something wrong if one were to say, I will disregard all these issues or technicalities and proceed Anyway, I thank you very much, Your Lordships.